Enchantress is a very fascinating hero right now, for the reason that she can be played as a core and a support, and that's what today's video is going to be about. I'm going to be showing you how to play Enchantress as a core or a support. If you haven't given this hero a try, I think it's fantastic for solo queue for one main reason right now, at least one reason that typically you wouldn't expect from Enchantress, and that is that she has become a fairly good farmer even in bad games due to the new enchant. I'm going to be discussing that, why Enchantress has more options than ever just because of her changes, and why you should probably be picking this hero nowadays. Also, if you guys have been enjoying the content I've been putting out lately, uh, I think the Pango video got quite a good response. Like this video, it just helps me grow and create content daily. I know I say this quite a bit in the videos, but it really is the truth and I have nothing else to say. I'm trying to create content so you guys can learn Dota and enjoy, obviously, my content if you do every single day. It is essentially my job, so if you could like the video, that's all I ask. I appreciate it a lot. Now let's get into the Enchantress video. Hopefully all of you guys have been watching the recent tournament or the qualifiers for the upcoming tournament that is going to be in Los Angeles, if I'm not mistaken, in America, where I live. Let's go, baby. I, I unfortunately am not going, but I am watching the tournament and following the qualifiers. And over on the main Game Leap website, I've just made an analysis for OG versus Bulgaria. If you don't know who Bulgaria it is, that's fine because they're like a 2k stack however i just analyze their game and see what og did well and what the enemy team did bad and i plan to do more of these in the future so if you're interested click the link down below and you're gonna get a lot of great content over there and especially these qualifier matches that i'll be analyzing so i'll see you there so the first game i want to be looking at is a match where march one of the best support players in the world plays enchantress and i think the formula for enchantress is generally easy Right. In this lane here, he's laning with a, a life stealer, and typically what you want to do with Enchantress in the laning stages of support is take your enchant and then enchant the offlaner and auto attack them. As you're going to see here, he stands still and literally auto attacks the bat rider. And that's basically all you want to do is Enchantress for the most part. You're leveling your enchant at level 1 in hopes to get a creep later on, and then yeah, you, you kind of just win the lane. One of the biggest nerfs to Chen a while ago, and I know this isn't a Chen video, but I want to bring this up, is that heroes like Chen and Doom cannot take the big creep off the camp. Now, of course, Enchantress doesn't get the XP, but you can take over things like the Troll Summoner, and this is absolutely massive. The reason being is that these creeps are just genuinely insane, right? They're straight up insane. You can't get much more damage in the early game than these big creeps, and that's what we're going to see here. He just goes on the Bad Rider and can sort of just do a bunch of damage strictly with the creep and continue to zone him out. Now, I don't want to focus too much on that laning stage because it was just a lot of tiny dragon creeps and the enchanters chasing them around by stealing creeps from the camps and basically running large creeps at Tiny and Batrider. What's more notable this game is the skill build than what he does in the mid slash, I guess, late game. This match only went around 22 minutes, but I'll talk about a couple of key things here. So first off, you don't take on support enchantress, maybe on position four because you have a bit more gold for mana items, such as clarities, raindrops, or even just more stat items, you would consider maxing out your impetus first, but on this position 5 enchantress, you're going to want to be maxing your enchant. If you guys don't know how the spell works right now, it is a slow if you use it on your opponents on a 20 second cooldown, very low mana spell, one of the lowest mana spells in Dota, and it enchants a creep. Every single time you take a level in it, it goes up by 30 seconds, and the damage that your creep gets goes up by 20 at all levels, right? Your creep, whichever one you enchant, straight up gets attack damage all the way up to 70. 70 damage. Your creep can get 70 damage. Do you understand what that implies? What it implies is that you can farm with your creep, creep waves and jungle camps alike, and this is a 55% slow. For 4 seconds at level 1, 6 seconds at max, 55%. Like, what is that number? But all jokes aside, this really is what Enchantress is right now. You're just a support that is hard to go on, right? Because naturally you have Untouchable at level 6, which just makes you almost impossible to kill. And then you buy a bunch of stats. There are some Tranquil Boot variants of this Enchantress, but for solo queue purposes, I'm going to recommend you go the build that March does in this game that I'll be bringing up in a moment. Okay, skipping a bit ahead of here, at the 10 minute mark, I just want to show a play that he makes that is unlike a lot of supports. Usually most supports can't actually kill jungle camps and that is not the case for Enchantress, right? As you're gonna see here, she takes over the Hellbear Smasher, kills the Hellbear Smasher camp, right? And then immediately uses that Hellbear Smasher to farm the small camp. That's simply what you can do now with this Enchanted Creep, right? If you get a Seder in particular, or this Hellbear Smasher, you just wipe through creep camps, and that gold is a big deal on these supports. Every single time you can get 20, 30 gold, it matters a lot. It's going to let you get that extra sentry, or in this case, two bracers, a wand, and a belt of strength. And this is the current build on Enchantress. You are looking to become tanky, and then provide stable damage with your creep and maxed out impetus later on, noting that you will be always skipping nature's attendance. It is way too much mana, 
completely unsustainable and has been nerfed significantly, so skip this spell. And yeah, his team ends up snowballing very hard this game, so it's one of those matches where you could be like, well, speed, this only looks good because his team is crushing. And I would argue, and actually agree to some extent, that yeah, it looks particularly good this game, because if you watch it all through, you'll just notice that he just runs around with his team and sort of snowballs. The thing is, and what I want to point out is, let's say your team is not doing well. What should you do as Enchantress? Well, it's a very simple formula. You simply take over a creep and then shove it into a creep wave, right? Usually your supports, when you're behind, are just food, right? They just walk around and die. Enchantress can take over any creep and send it to any lane, and it lasts for a very long time, 120 seconds. You have two minutes, two minutes to just farm a wave, right? And you can send it across the map. This delays the game, right? Because you're naturally shoving in a wave that they'll have to deal with, and of course it gets you farm. There's really no better formula for solo queue, because even if you're losing, you have an option to farm and get items and scale, and Enchantress scales fine. You can buy something like a pike, right, to deal damage. You can buy even a, a pipe to heal your team or help your team survive, which is what we'll see this match. You have options, and I love options when you just want to be successful at anything. Really. In, in Tota particularly, it's, it's good. And really just to show off how drastic this is and how on top of your game you need to be with these creeps, I, I want to show you this clip here, right? So he takes over a mud golem, and while his team is fighting, he's using the mud golem to shove out mid wave, right? Currently, their bottom wave is getting pushed in, Lifestealer is split pushing top, Nature's Prophet will be helping him in a moment, right? But he's using his Mud Golem to shove in the mid wave, and this allows his team to put pressure on multiple lanes, which is a big deal for closing out games, and obviously he gets the gold. It's just this simple ability to shove the wave that might seem basic, and he, it's like, oh, but that's all he's doing. Yes, that's all he's doing. Do you notice that's basically all he's doing in this match? That is a lot of impact, just as a support, to be able to be in one place and provide some extra damage or just a distraction for your team, as you're very tanky. Power treads on strength treads. One, two bracers. <laughs> like he's, he's very tanky. And then, at the same time, farm globally and shoving the waves globally. And yeah, this game is going to come to a very swift end as he's able to pick up a pipe for his team, which synergizes with the Crimson Guard and Vlad's Nature's Prophet. This is a very high MMR thing to do, where you synergize your item timings and, in general, synergize your overall items. It allows them to have this death ball lineup that works fantastically, as you can see him chunking this SF, making his life absolutely miserable. And this is what an Enchantress in a game where you're snowballing just becomes a real pain in the buttocks. You can't deal with it, it can deal with you, and it chunks you even though you're level 11, SF level 14, he basically can't stand up to you. Up next is something that I've been experimenting with. I've played a couple of games of Enchantress mid, and I'm actually pretty confident it's quite solid. You can play this hero also as an offlaner, and I'll give a couple of the differences I would recommend you change from mid to offlane Enchantress, but now let's just get into it. I want to talk about what you should be doing and skilling if you happen to play this and give it a shot, and I really do think this is legit. It's not a meme, I don't think this is that goofy, I overall think Enchantress is a solid mid laner now that you max enchant and have this way to split push and push in waves that old Enchantress really didn't have. So going into the laning stage, because you're mid lane, you don't want to take your enchant to level 1, right? You don't have any teammates to synergize it with, you can't really zone people out that effectively, you're much better off taking impetus at level 1 to secure creeps, and then you know by the time the creep cam spawns at minute 1, and then you can obviously at that point take over a creep with your level 2 spike. I want to point out this word that I think is pretty important. I put a word on this hill when I'm playing on Radiant. If you're on Dire, you can just walk over to this camp. It's no big deal. But on, on Radiant, I really, really like putting down this ward. Reason being is then I can simply walk over to here and enchant the creep from behind the trees. It saves a ton of time that in the mid lane is crucial, right? That three seconds of me having to walk all the way around is going to make me miss an extra creep mid. And that will make me mad. I won't be happy if I have to miss a creep mid. So I'm not going to make that happen. In terms of items, you're going to notice I'm going for the basic intelligence mid laner stat build. If you're in the off lane, you typically want to have quite a bit more regen just to make sure you can sustain a lane that can pressure you much harder. Obviously, that's just how dual lanes work. In the mid lane, you can be more greedy, and that's why I go no talismans, while typically an off lane enchantress will go for something like a wand and a bracer just because you want to be tankier, you don't have as many levels, so it makes a lot of sense. And yeah, just to look at some of this early laning stage, you're going to notice I'm going to use my impetus to secure ranged creeps. I can use it to secure creeps that I think are contested. It's just a really nice option to make your laning stage pretty easy. Also, Enchantress has quite high damage. At level 2, I have 63, and it's yeah, generally impressive. And then you can see me secure a ranged creep with my impetus. I just like laning with this hero. It feels pretty easy. And then also, as you're going to see upcoming here, I also have the option to take over a creep and obviously get the damage bonus from it, right? So I have a creep with the damage bonus. If I hit level three, it's even better, right? Now I can take a creep that has plus 30 damage and this alpha wolf is insane. It's really, really insane for leaning, right? As you can see, when I enchant it, it has 40 damage in total now. 
I actually feel like that's a bug. I don't know why the extra damage is showing, but it's really just an impressive thing to lane with having two creeps. And unfortunately, Troll does quite a bit of damage to my creep race long range hero with good harass. And I wanted to clear the camp to the best of my ability. So the Alpha Wolf took a bit of damage, but regardless, it's going to pump up my damage just because the Alpha Wolf aura, I have 86 damage. That is insane. Like it's literally insane. And yeah, this is a bit lucky, but even something like a Mud Golem is fantastic to lane with or an Ice Ogre Creep can help you out a ton. And yeah, just to talk about what you want to do as Min Enchantress, don't gank. I actually really highly advise you do not gank. You want to spend most of your time farming on this hero, which might sound weird, but you're really, really good at it. As you're going to see here, I can just bounce from camp to camp, use my impetus in this double damage that I found, as well as the creep camp that I can take over to just wipe through camps. I have 60 CS at the 7 minute mark, and this is replicatable. You, you can actually do this over and over again. It's not hard. You just take a creep, you kill the camp, you go to the next one, and I ping my house guard to get away from my camp, because that is absolutely on except <laughs> but yeah all jokes aside all i'm really trying to do is amp my farm and kick someone out of mid if they do come and want to just try to get the farm that's not my main priority as i said my main priority is the farm and you'll see that here with this regen room here i'm able to spam my impetus and yeah i'm just trying to maximize efficiency in any way possible this is some basic mid laning and this is generally what i recommend you do on enchantress and this is probably my favorite play of the game outside of one hurricane pike play i'll be making a little bit later on but as you're gonna see I'm just keeping my game really simple. I am out farming a, a lone druid spammer. This guy spams lone druid. It's rank 86. This is no joke how fast you farm. Uh, look at this net worth lead. I have not killed Troll. Troll has a kill. And yet I am up on him by 1200 net worth. That is insane. Uh, that's actually insane. It's actually insane. And then, right, they leave the mid lane. All I do is I take over this mud golem creep. I make it hit the tower. There you go. I get a tower. And then what do you know? This uh, hoppy lady strength support for some reason decides to come mid yate you just kill them like that that's it this is the formula for this hero very basic easy to execute uh and yeah for that reason i can't recommend it enough and then finally i'll show you the first gank i make it's around the 11 minute mark i take the mid tier one tower so i feel like you know this is finally a good time for me to consider ganking they've been diving my bot lane very hard they've obviously been struggling so now i'm just gonna walk over and chuck some impetus and yeah this is a lot of damage i have the alpha wolf creep so i do even more damage and it's just yeet central at this point double kill for my huskar easy rotation an insane amount of damage i'm level 13 i can take ancients i'm loving it and last thing to note about this minchantress in particular you will have to be shipping quite a bit of clarities it's just quite hard to actually sustain your mana pool on this hero overall especially as you get a lot of points in your heal so hey, i do recommend generally right taking a ton of clarities and buying mana items later on which i'll get into but as you can see here it's four heroes generally if you're any other hero besides enchantress you have to be very scared but i do not care i do not care i walk up get off the enchant on the troll warlord he burns his ulti obviously i'm gonna kite back to kite out his ulti just good movement my huskar goes down here poor guy <laughs> but then they're like oh it's a 3v1 and we have a tusk right easy easy money right look at this look at that creep look at the lich's health guys look at this this is crazy and and this wildling's just chunking on him and this is not good micro i just click the wildling and then i click it on lich that's literally it right i i see that the lich is generally low so i click the wildling on him that's that's it though look at this lich's health that's a hundred damage from one wildling attack bam <laughs> i i just find that hilarious it's so much damage in the eye i turn on my heal i juke at some of the snapfire ultimate and uh, we pick up an ultra kill 13 minutes into the game even when my team is essentially feeding, because obviously, if I'm 8k net worth and we're less than 1k behind, eh, we're probably not doing too well. Alright, upcoming here is basically where I'm going to end the episode, besides going over the talents and what I go a little bit later on into the game in terms of skill build and item build. But this is what we call yeetusing the fetus, uh, if that makes any sense. But you turn on your impetus, make sure you right click it, right? It's very important that you have it by default on. Typically, if I'm laning, I won't have this default on. I'll click it every single time I want to use it, just so I don't accidentally waste mana. But overall here, right, you turn on your impetus, you click Hurricane Pike in an area with vision, right? Do note that you need vision to throw the impetus. If you lose vision after you've thrown them, that's totally fine, but you need the vision to throw them. So, right, I push him into an area where I can see him, and there goes his health. Poor guy. <laughs> Look at this network. 9k network down the drain. One click of a button, and he's gone. And now you just chill in the back with your Ogre Madrai's Bloodlust, which frankly is a very good combo if you want to pick up some... Uh, some combo, and then yeah, it's an ultra kill. Woo! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> so much damage. I just love watching this. How is this not a rampage? Someone tell me how this isn't a rampage. Like, what is the timing for rampage? That has to. What? 
And to finish off the game, let's talk quickly about talents. I generally recommend the 20 movement speed over the 15 mana persist. Movement speed is essentially health on Enchantress, as you can evade a ton of spells because you're very fast, and position very well. Positioning is key on Enchantress, it's damage, it's basically your damage and your ability to survive, so I, I really like the 20 movement speed talent. At 15, I take 50 damage because you're obviously right-clicking. At level 20, Enchant Effects Ancients can be quite good if you think your untouchable slow doesn't really matter. That goes from game to game because taking over the Ancients actually can be quite useful as some of them give you a ton of HP or the dragon gives you really good wave shove. So that is an option that you should keep in mind. But uh, yeah, that's generally what I go. And then finally at 25, I like to go the impetus damage. If you do want to go tank enchantress for whatever, for whatever reason, like let's say you're offlane and you go like pipe crimson or something like that, you can go the uh, nature's attendance talents and become unbelievably tank, right? With both of the nature's attendance heal talents. But overall, if you're going right click and trying to scale, I recommend the damage talents. And yeah, look at this last clip here as we end off the game. I'm pushing in mid. I want to get split pushed. They have naturally been split pushing us this game. They have a troll warlord and a lone druid so instead of just sitting back and hoping they don't split push us i can use even just a lane creep that i took over to shove in the wave as i said very effective just such a cool concept that you have with this hero and now we're in it to win it this is basically all of enchantress i love this hero it just lets you have super high kill games and a very reliable landing stage that loses to almost nobody and yeah for that can't recommend this hero enough but to end off the game i heard came pike the tusk poor guy he really was trying his best he was but it's it just really wasn't good enough. And that's going to be about all for today's video as you watch me just chunk these people down. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you are willing to try out Enchantress. I think this hero is definitely not underrated right now. I wouldn't say that because a lot of the pros are picking and it's on the come up on Dota2ProTracker.com. It is one of the most picked heroes. And I think for good reason. Its win rate is not fantastic in that regard. But that's because I think it's a slightly difficult hero. But if you give it enough of a chance and practice all this different micro that you have to do, you have the opportunity to have a very high skilled hero with a lot of options. And I love options. That's the message of this video. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now, right now, to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys, 25%, and start your journey today.